Hi, I'm Mike from 1A Auto. We've been selling auto parts for over 30 years. What's up guys, I'm Andy from 1A Auto. Today I'm gonna to show you how to install this lower ball joint on this two-wheel drive 2008 Chevy Silverado work truck. If you need this part or other parts for your vehicle, click the link in the description and head over to 1AAuto.com. I'm gonna take a pry bar and take this hubcap off first. Go around here. Pry it off. There you go. Pull that off. Set it aside. I'll take a 22 millimeter socket. I'm going to loosen up these lug caps. Loosen those off. Take this center cap off. I'll take a breaker bar and a 22 millimeter socket and loosen up these lug nuts. Now that all those are loosened up, I'm gonna go to the other side and do the same. Now I'm gonna raise and support the vehicle. We're using a two post lift. If you're doing this at your house, you can use a jack and jack stands. <laughs> these lug nuts off. Once we get those lug nuts off, just take the wheel off. All right, I'm gonna remove this brake caliper. I'm gonna remove it with the bracket so the pads are gonna stay inside there. I'm going to use an 18 millimeter socket and a breaker bar. I'm going to loosen up these two bolts. Right there and right here. Once I break them free, I'll get a ratchet. Take that bolt out. I'm going to support the bracket as I pull this bolt out. Pull that out. I'm just gonna take a straight blade screwdriver, just get in between the caliper and the rotor, just pry it out a little bit. I'll just compress the piston a little bit so it's easier to remove. Slide this off. Then I'm gonna take a bungee cord, just wrap it around the bracket position it so that the brake hose is not um, not being doesn't have any tension on the brake hose so actually I'm going to wrap this up a little bit higher wrap this a couple times that should be good position that out of the way Make sure that hose is nice and loose. This is a newer rotor and a newer hub setup. If you had an older rotor, older hub, and the rotor is loose, you don't actually have to take the rotor off for this, but it's just easier to take it off. I'm just going to mark where the rotor went because I want to put it in the same spot when I go put it back together, just in case there's any variation in the hub to rotor. You want it to ride the same as when you took it apart. I'm going to disconnect the tie rod end. You don't necessarily have to when you're doing this job, but
but instead of just having this knuckle sag and hang over here, it'll be easier to just pull the whole knuckle off. So I will remove this with some side cutters. Just pull this cotter pin out. Pull that cotter pin out. All right, I'm gonna loosen up this nut. There's some rust built up on this, so this size might not be exactly accurate. I'm gonna use a 22 millimeter socket to loosen it up and a breaker bar. Next time, before I take this nut completely off, I am gonna use a punch and a hammer, and I'm gonna just break this um, outer tie rod in free, just like that. Sometimes it may be a little more difficult, so. Pull the nut off, grab the tie rod in, and just set that aside. Next, I'm gonna take these cotter pins out. There's one on this upper ball joint, there's one on this lower ball joint, just use a side cutters. Just slide it out. Do the same with this bottom one. Work it out just like that. I'm gonna use an 18 millimeter wrench. I'm gonna just loosen up this nut up top here. You can turn the knuckle all the way to the side. Just like that. I'm not gonna take it off yet. Now I'm gonna loosen up this bottom one. All right, for this bottom, I'm gonna use a 22 millimeter socket and a breaker bar. This one's on there pretty good. I'm gonna leave the nut on the top upper ball joint and I'm gonna break it free from the knuckle. And just take a hammer and give it a tap. I was able to release it. Right, before I take that nut off the upper one, I'm gonna release this lower one. I can take a hammer and try to release it like this by hitting the knuckle. If that doesn't work, I'm gonna to resort to a pickle fork. Get this in position. And I'll hit this with a hammer. There we go, it released. So now, now I'll take my pry bar, pry down on the upper control arm, take this nut off, just like that. We'll release that. Now I'm gonna grab the knuckle, support it. It is pretty heavy with the hub on it. Take this nut off, just like that. Slide that out of the way. This lower ball joint has been replaced in the past. Yours may have a grease fitting, it may not. I'm just gonna take a 10 millimeter wrench, take this grease fitting off, cause it's gonna be in my way. A little bit of grease. Take that off. 
There's a snap ring on the top of this ball joint. I'm going to use some snap ring pliers. Get in there, spread it apart, pull the snap ring off. Now what you can do is, if you have a ball joint press tool, you can use this. This adapter is a little bit too big, and this adapter is a little bit too small because the ball joint's right there. But normally what you would do is take this, Normally you would set this up like this. And then put a socket on there and a ratchet. Tighten this down and that's gonna press the old ball joint out. But my adapter doesn't fit properly. So I can't use this tool. So because I don't have the proper tool, I'm gonna to try to hammer this out with a hammer, but I wanna lower the control arm down onto a floor jack so that the control arm's not gonna move as much as I'm hammering. So it is moving, so we just need to be careful not to ruin any of the lower control arm as we're hitting. Also if you have um, an air compressor, you can use an air hammer and hammer it out. Just like that. Here's our old ball joint. Here's our new ball joint from 1AAuto.com. As you can see, the stud is the same. The new ball joint comes with a new castle nut. Flip it over. Backside is the same. The boot is the same. This looks a little different right now, but when you install it on the vehicle, it'll um, get pushed down exactly how it's supposed to. Get yours at 1AAuto.com and you'll be ready to rock and roll. Just want to take a wire brush. I'm just going to clean this up a little bit. You don't want to do too crazy in here, but just a little bit. Get some of the rust out. That's pretty good. To install this ball joint, I actually have the right adapters to uh, use the tool. Just line this into position. Take the ball joint tool. Actually, I'm loosen this up. sure everything looks good. So we have the big cup on the bottom. Make sure it's pressing on the ball joint properly. And then this top cup is bigger than the top of the ball joint. And I'm just going to tighten it down. It's going to suck the ball joint right into the lower control arm. Gonna tighten this down till it's all the way down. All right. Now I'm gonna loosen up the tool.
take that off, take that off, take the top part off. All right, so just make sure that that ball joint's seated all the way down. Make sure you can see the groove for the snap ring. I'll take the snap ring with some snap ring pliers and just reinstall. Or it comes with a new snap ring, so use the new one. Make sure that's seated properly. That looks good. Now we're gonna take the knuckle, slide this up into the ball joint. Take the nut, get that started underneath. Oops. Before I tighten that nut up, I'm actually going to take a pry bar. We're going to get the upper ball joint started because it'll be easier to tighten these nuts down. Take the nut, install that. And also I'm gonna put the outer tie rod in and get that started. Now we're gonna to start to tighten this nut on the bottom. When we go to tighten this, the stud spins. So I'm gonna use a 15 16 wrench or you can use a 24 millimeter and a eight millimeter Allen key going to hold the stud with the allen and tighten it with the wrench. All right, once you get that nut all the way up, I'm going to tighten that. I'm going to torque that with a 24 millimeter socket and a torque wrench to 81 foot pounds. Now I'm going to tighten this upper ball joint. I'm going to tighten this with a ratchet and a socket, then I'll get a torque wrench. Now I'm going to take an 18 millimeter socket and a torque wrench, and I'm going to torque this upper ball joint to 37 foot pounds. Next, I'm going to take a cotter pin um, and line it up with the hole. If the castle nut isn't on there, that it lines up with the hole, you can tighten it up a little bit. Just take an 18 millimeter wrench. Tighten it up a little more until it lines up with the hole. And that should be good. Then I'll take some side cutters. Pull down on the cutter pin. Just cut it there. And cut it right there. I'm going to tighten this outer tie rod nut. Just use a 22 millimeter socket and ratchet. If the stud is spinning when you're doing this, you can actually take a pry bar, get under here, just hold it down while you're tightening it. Ours didn't spin, so we're good. And I'm gonna tighten this with the 22 millimeter socket and torque wrench. I'm gonna tighten this to 44 foot pounds. That's good right there. And there is a castle nut. And to line up the cotter pin, I am gonna have to tighten it a little bit. So I'll take my 22 millimeter socket Ratchet, just tighten it up until the hole lines up. Then I can slip the cotter pin in. You always want to use a new cotter pin. Just throw out the old one. Take my side cutters, trim the cotter pin. I'm going to install this sway bar link. I'm just take a pry bar 
get underneath the sway bar. Slide up on the sway bar. Get that in position. And carefully slip the stud through the through the link. And put the top on. Put this grommet on the top. And then get the nut started. Then I'm gonna take a 15 millimeter wrench, 15 millimeter socket and ratchet, and I'll tighten up this sway bar link. Now I'm gonna tighten this sway bar link and torque it to 17 foot pounds. Okay, I'm gonna reinstall my rotor. Now I lined, I made these marks to line that up with that stud so that the rotor is back the way it was when I took it off. Just take a lug nut to hold the rotor on. If you had a bolt that was holding the rotor on, you'd put that bolt on now. This vehicle doesn't have that. I'm gonna remove the bungee cord from the brake caliper. Slide that out. Take the brake caliper, make sure the brake hose is not twisted. Line this back up on the rotor. Slide that into position. Take these brake caliper bolts. Sometimes they've come with thread locker. You can reapply thread locker if you want. I'm gonna take a ratchet and an 18 millimeter socket. Get these snug first before I torque them. I'm gonna use a torque wrench, tighten these down to 129 foot pounds. Just like that. Same with the top one. Now I'm just gonna grease this, take a grease gun, put it on the grease fitting, give it a couple pumps. Do a couple more pumps. All right, I like to do it till I see the boot move a little bit, so that at least I know the grease made it down below. Now remove the grease gun. Slide the wheel over the lug studs. Put the lug nuts on. I'm gonna use a torque wrench and a 22 millimeter socket. We're gonna to torque these down to 140 foot-pounds. We're gonna to torque them in a star pattern that's gonna tighten the wheel down evenly. Good. Now I'm gonna install a center cap. I'll use the socket, the same 22 millimeter socket and just snug these down by hand. You really don't wanna tighten these because they'll, they're plastic, they'll end up breaking. And we're gonna take this outer hubcap and we're gonna line this valve stem area up right there and just 
push it on. Thanks for watching. Visit us at 1AAuto.com for quality auto parts, fast and free shipping, and the best customer service in the industry.